Yes, we're bumping along again. World's fastest bumper car update. <laughs> Oh, I know, these widescreen full-length uh, updates are coming along thick and fast at the moment, not monthly. Well, that's because we're making a lot of progress, forwards and backwards. Can you make progress backwards? I don't know. So, last time around, uh, we got to a major sticking point being the chain and its position and uh, its uh, trajectory, for want of a better word. Mm. Uh, that being the seat, obviously. Don't really want it by my left buttock. Or indeed under my left armpit. So I checked out Mr. Fez's video uh, to see if he'd got the same problem and what kind of solution he'd come up with. And he had a similar situation as you can see. We could always modify the seat and put in a good old fashioned chain guard. But of course, if we do drop the whole thing another couple of inches by creating this cradle situation, it'll look a bit more like that. And if we move the seat back an inch, maybe two, and give it a little tilt, a little angle, we may well have found a solution. Well, let's bloody well hope so. Of course, if we do use this cradling technique, so a frame around the bottom of the engine rather than it sitting on top of the chassis, then we're going to have to completely rethink the engine mounts. Although they won't be dissimilar, they'll just be mounting from there which actually is one of the engine mounts from the original situation where it hung uh, from a frame around here. Different kettle of fish at the back. Uh, we could mount it, I don't know, that with some kind of cross piece here. So the mount could go from here to the cross piece. Not insurmountable is what I'm trying to say. Just more engineering involved. Talking of solutions and inches, um, these were the original air filters and um, I've found these. And while we're on the transmission, um, let's look at the transmission. Yes, this is the original gear shift and how it was kind of situated on the bike. That being your left foot peg. Rear set. So, unless I'm going to uh, lay prone over the motor like on a drag bike, that ain't going to work. But the whole mechanism um, is obviously going to be similar in that what you've got to do is essentially just push this left and right to change gear. Or forward and aft, even. So, in order to get that forward so it can be operated with the left foot as on a motorcycle we would have to turn around the top bit that way it would clear all this stuff and still get down to a left foot position somewhere down here. so again my question is uh, same as the steering actually if you flip everything around the other way does that mean it'll be one up and six down, uh, uh, five down, or uh, does it stay the same? I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out fast enough. It's all right. I've ridden both. My uh, my very first bike, the Yamaha Fuzzy, was four down. Simple as that. Uh, everything else has been one down and four up, five up, whatever. Something like that, even. Actually, something exactly like that could work. Look, it's mounted off there. Da, da, da. There's your pedal. And seat-wise, positioning thereof, uh, we've got quite a lot of flexibility, as you can see. And uh, this is kind of where we got it at the moment, I think. And we've got anything up to that kind of movement in terms of positioning. Welcome back to Tink's Garage. Yes, it's a frame up. Engine frame version 2.1 to be precise. Yes, I'm building a wooden badger. I'm going to be building a wooden mock-up of, um, of the proposed engine cradle. There we have it. Um, prototype 1.1. All oh, right, oh, I know it doesn't fit over the top of the engine. Well, that's because the top's bigger than the bottom, and eventually it's going to slot in from the bottom effectively. More like that.
How do you do that? Never you mind, can't give away trade secrets. So the purposes of this exercise was to see if we could drop the motor uh, potentially three to four inches um, as opposed to what looks like happening, i.e. raising it. But uh, this wooden frame here would be in line with the chassis rats. That's the idea, right? We, we put this box section in the middle. And I think we can comfortably do three inches, if not a little bit more. Uh, we shall see. But uh, as you can see, there's plenty of room around everything. And actually, we could make it a little bit shorter, which is nice. Yeah, we can knock an inch off there at the back. Maybe even at the front as well, just to make sure we clear the exhaust mm, pipes when they come down. And if we need to, we can go a little bit narrow. Yeah, we've got like an inch to spare there. Although that's we nice. An inch this side, although we want to offset it because we want to make sure that this air sprocket is either inside or outside the chassis rails. We're going to offset the whole thing a little bit. I think inside is probably better. But yes, folks, I think Operation Engine Cradle is a go. The next question, of course, is how we mount it to that cradle. And uh, if I'm not very much mistaken, I think our existing bracket there will um, fit perfectly to the uh, original engine mount up the top there. And just about work. At the rear here, it's not so simple. Uh, we can either do some ridiculous kind of strut up to this top mount up there. That would be quite ridiculous. Or what I'm thinking, uh, bearing in mind the chassis piece, the cradle will be two inches the same as the uh, rails at the moment. We could potentially put a rod all the way through, big steel rod, and just slot it straight through. I kind of like that idea. Right, Mr. Schneeberger, over to you for some welding. So I think using this cradle, our only real issue is going to be ground clearance um, of the exhaust system. Which, of course, we can adjust for in many other ways. So let's see what happens. So on the gear shift, this was uh, inset to allow that rod to come back this way through a very particular hole in the frame and by swapping it around the other way we've gained ourselves an inch out this way which is kind of what we wanted so that's kind of good whether we have to flip it up i don't know i.e yeah through 180 degrees i'm not sure but uh, we'll find out later stage one that means we don't have to have a ridiculously long and fairly unstable uh, bolt to uh, strap the rest onto. We can get away with a much shorter one so it brings it in line with here. We like simple solutions. Anyway, I think that's quite enough excitement for one episode. Next time we'll be going to be looking at steering. So, uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down here somewhere, and encourage others to watch my lunacy.